Hey, this is Dr. Linda Davis, and today I want to work through a brochure with you, and we are going to do this with Microsoft Word. So you don't need Publisher or any, any special specific program like Illustrator or anything like that. You can easily do this in Microsoft Word. So what you see is the exterior side of a brochure where we have the title panel here, the back panel here, which contains the contact information for the company, and this last panel here is just any extra information that comes over from one of the interior panels, text panel one, and that's just because of how it unfolds that uh, you can have text panel one would be um, uh, showing and then this would show next to it before the brochure is fully expanded out with the folds. Let me show you the interior panel and this is the one we'll work through today and we have the uh, starting effect with the drop cap showing here and how to format that. We'll also go into inserting images of course but also how to pull those words very close and have it go around um, an image that you know has a round or sloped edge to it. Also we have some horizontal rules in here. These are decorative horizontal rules that separate one section of your text from the other and of course when the brochure is totally folded out this is what you would see and also inserting pictures how it looks better in one place than it would another and then just little artwork pieces here and there to kind of um, add decorative things to your brochure. So let's get started on how to do a brochure in Microsoft Word. So let me just, uh, I think I have a, let me just go to File, New, Blank Document, and let's change some settings first before we get too far into Word, before we even type any text. Now, in the Home tab, we want to go to Line Spacing and make sure you're at 1.0, and then we want to um, go and to page layout and do several different things in page layout. The first thing I want you to do is go to the indent section in the paragraph ribbon and change your left indent back to zero. And if in spacing after, if you've got anything other than zero point there, change it back to zero point. And then we also want to um, check out a few things here. We want to go to um, margins, go down to custom margins, and talk about this for a bit. Now you can go as close as point 0.2 and still have it be inside the printable range, but I'm going to work with just 0.5 for the top margin, 0.5 for the bottom. Same thing for left and right, so 0.5 all the way around. The other important part of brochure work is orientation. You must change it from portrait to landscape instead because what you have was an eight and a half by eleven sheet of paper, normal size paper, but you are going to turn it on its side and fold it so that makes a brochure size. Now once you get that set just say okay and with your cursor up here um, we are also going to create three columns. So you may want to see your ruler bars so your rulers are up here. If you can't see them go up to view and check mark ruler and they should appear. That kind of helps design along the way. And um, go back to uh, page layout. And the other thing we need to do is put some columns in. A brochure is usually three columns. So let's go to columns and select three. And you'll see that take place on your ruler bar up there. Okay. And then we want to go back to that same area. Go to columns and this time go down to more columns. And we're not asking for more columns, we're just asking for more items that we can work with here. Now, uh, uh, as I said, it's already set to three columns. And we may want to put a vertical rule in there, which is means you just need to check mark on line between. And you'll see the lines, vertical lines pop up in between each column. And that kind of helps you with the folds as well. And um, at this point, I have this checked. I think it defaults to this equal column width. Now if you did want to tweak a column, make it uh, not as wide or wider, then you can uncheck this and it will let you inside uh, that's column 1, 2, and 3 right there and let you change the measurements as you need to. The width of the column is here and the white space in between is over here. So you can uh, amend that if you need to. So le leaving it like this, uh, I am going to leave mine on equal column width for this demonstration and I'll say OK. Now um, we're going to do the um, interior first so let me bring this up 
it's a little bit easier I think to do the interior first. You can make it two separate documents with the interior being one document and exterior being another separate document or you can roll it all into one document. So today I'll probably keep it for time's sake into one document. So I have the interior text panel one and I'm just going to um, call this interior text panel one just for the sake of uh, giving you some guidelines. Um, let me put that on there. This and this is a uh, would normally be your like your uh, subtitle. Let me take the size down just a little bit, maybe more like 18. And so you might put some kind of a title or subtitle here before you start into your regular body text. And let me put it back on size 12 or 11 even for brochure font size. Now um, I would suggest though that on this uh, headings. Uh, or subheadings here that you put, use a sans serif style font like either Calibre or Arial. Uh, there's a few others out there obviously that are uh, more of a clean looking font. Those make for better titles and subtitles. And then when we go down to the next area we'll go down take it back down to size 12 and we'll pick something like Times New Roman which is fine. Uh, let me go find Times New Roman just for a body text. A good body text is a serif font. Uh, which means each character has the little extra wing on it where a sans serif font each character does not have the little extra wing on each character okay so here we go now a quick way to get some instant text on here because we're just not worrying so much about the content today we're just worrying about how to format or we're concerned about how to just format all the fonts and get the style of the brochure right so this is my little trick for doing that so equals put this little formula in it's equals r a n d let me get the caps off. R A N D. Parenthesis four, comma ten. End of parentheses. Okay, that little formula will give you a lot of text. So let me hit enter. Instant text, right? So one thing I want to point out is these vertical rules. They were not there until we put the text in. So when you're typing your real content in, uh, you will not see the vertical rule show up until you actually get into column 2 or beyond. So as you're typing in column 1 this will not show up yet so if you've got that uh, activated in your columns area. So the first thing I want to show you decoratively is a drop cap. Just highlight the first letter that we have here and I'm going to go to insert tab and then you'll look over at drop cap over here. Now click on that and you'll see a couple of different ways to do it. There's uh, dropped within the margins and that one is outside the margins. So look at this one, then look at that one. Which one do you like better? Well, I prefer the dropped one. And then I'm going to format that. You've probably seen this in magazine publications before. So I want to format it, make it colorful, a little more fancy. So I am going to um, I can go to home and go into uh, just text effects, that glowing A there. Click on that and let's just pick one. Now I've got a lot of blues going on in, with, between the logos and the pictures here so um, I'm gonna find, let's see, I think it was that blue I ended up using. And This is more style than anything else so um, you can change the color, you can change the font, whatever you need to do on that. So I'm gonna click on that. The other thing I want to do is put some shadow effect on there and I believe I can go back and do that and just go down to shadow and pick the kind of shadow effect I want to dress it up a bit. I'm going to go out all the way down to perspective and the second one over kind of shoots that shadow more toward the inner right and I like that one so I'm going to use that one. Let me click on that. kind of gives it more of a 3D effect like the O is jumping off the page a bit. Gives it some depth so let's move on. We've got that done. Now if you don't like the color, you don't like the style font, you can change all that. You can change the size as well too. If it's too big you can go down, you can go back to um, drop cap and, and change those settings. Now moving down a little bit, let's just put an image in. So in, putting images in in a Word document. Same thing as always, insert picture from file. So let me go find where I've got these um, particular images. And let's see, there we go. Now this is the beach logo I'm just putting in there. So in, let me insert that initially when I first put it in it will not allow me to have text 
anywhere around it until I make this change. So having the graphic activated, I'm going to go up to Wrap Text, and I'm going to select uh, Square Spine for now. Still lets you see now, it'll let you have text all the way around it. Now if I want to take it a step further, design-wise, I can go back up to Wrap Text and instead pick Edit Wrap Points. Edit Wrap Points. And that gives me the ability to pull in these words and get them real close and to also um, have that curved effect of the round image. So it will let me take advantage of that. So let me pull in a little bit, kind of see how that's going on. And if I want to push my up a little bit, I think it'll be work a little better. Let me go back and reset it. I move stuff around. Edit wrap point. There we go. And let me pull these words in just a little bit closer so that they will share the round effect or the rounded effect of the graphic. And I don't even have to be on a waypoint. I can pull from make my own waypoints. If it goes away, just put it back on there. And pull that around. And that, you've seen that in magazines, I'm sure at some point where the text kind of curves around the image and uh, that will work for that one okay now moving through we want to uh, break it up over here and let me just kind of get some white space going on and maybe we have a new section starting over here um, obviously uh, this could be a little subtitle on text panel 2 or something like that but I also might want to put a horizontal rule in here to kind of break it up between one section ending and another section beginning and you can look uh, you can search the uh, internet a lot of times I go to Google images and just search on um, scrolls and stuff artwork uh, that I can use and I found one a horizontal rule that was just a little bit beachy with a little palm tree in it kind of matched the same colors I was using so I thought that was an effective horizontal rule for this particular theme. And then I may have another like uh, subtitle in here um, that uh, is text panel 2. And uh, that would probably be more of a sans serif style font, just to remind you about that. Maybe you want it a little bigger. And then they may not have any more images in here, maybe strictly text, that's up to you. And then over here, tech panel 3, you may start a new section or you may have, it may just be a continuation of the uh, previous section. Okay, and let me push that back up there, there we go. And sometimes it'll jump back around. It may jump down to the previous panel, you just got to pull it back up there force it just get in front of it and hit enter that should do it and let me get the extra line space to go away all right now let's put another picture in around here and show you two different ways and why we pick one way over another so I'm going to insert another picture this is going to be my fishing one comes in really big I'm going to resize it but also, it's not, again, going to let me have text beside it until I go up and say wrap text and square. Okay, So let's say I put it over there. And I could put it over on this side of the um, panel. It's okay. Notice that the words leave a lot of ragged white space throughout here. And, you know, yes, you could edit wrap points and pull it all back in. But sometimes it's just easier to take the graphic and push it to the left side. And it wraps much nicer around the image, especially when it's a square image. So just keep that in mind. And you can you know, have it down here, wherever it makes sense to put it. Now, at the very bottom, um, let me just push these words down to the next uh, column. And I just want a little bit of artwork right here at the end. Let's say my um, tech, my content for text panel 3, where that section ended right in here. I want a little more artwork in there. So let me insert uh, my little bare feet thing, which may show up down on the next page, and that's okay though. I will resize it smaller. I will go up to wrap text again and say square, and maybe even a little bit smaller to get it back up. Um, where'd it go? Oh, sometimes it just escapes to the top of the page. Well, in that case though, just pull it down to where you do want it, and um, position it wherever you want it there. And that's just kind of, if that is really truly where your text uh, ends, um, without going into the next page, then that's a nice little ending piece there, okay? And again, at this point, you could cut it off right there and say, okay, this is the interior 
uh, get rid of this extra page two, save it as interior, and then open up a whole nother Word document for the exterior part. All right, and let me uh, go to the exterior part. Exterior part. Now, the first panel here can just be text that goes along with the text that's up here in, in um, text pa interior text panel one. So if I wanted just a little more text to fill this out, I'm just going to, just for demonstration purposes, just going to copy that and um, just fill out the rest of this part. Okay. And just paste it again just to get this section filled out. Probably good enough there. Um, I, I like everything to fill top to bottom on each column, either with artwork or words or whatever the case may be. Now that might be a little too much because I didn't really want to go up to hit this part. Um, the This panel, I'll just leave it there. I'll just put some word in there that'll fit. Of course, it pushed it all the way up, but let me just undo that and keep it there. I'll just end it there for sake of time. Now, this middle panel of the exterior, that is the back panel, the true back panel, so that when you fold the brochure, this is the very back panel. And we typically like to put contact information here. All right, so this is the back panel um, for contact contact information for the company and you might want to um, have a map of the location of the company and you may want to also have the physical address in there so I made one up so 241 Atlantic Boulevard uh, Key West Florida and so some made up zip code and uh, we want to center this part and talk about maps for just a bit I have a map already prepared obviously for this I'm going to insert this map as a picture that uh, I did of Key West and I also want to put a nice little border around it so don't forget you can use your picture styles up here so um, if you want to reveal all your picture styles, that's all of them, okay? Uh, I'll just use the first one on this particular map. Now, how did I get the map of if you have your own location for your business, of course? I would suggest that you go out to um, MapQuest. And let me just quickly go out there and show you how to do that. And to get your map the right size to show the different streets and, and where you're at on the street. So, Real quick, let me just show you. Um, typically, I go to MapQuest, and I will just, um, and you may be able to do it with Google Maps as well, and I just put in this fake um, address, but you put in your real company address, and it will give me, you know, a map of Key West, and let me, um, actually zoom out. I really would with Key West rather have see the whole island but yet it's got the pinpoint of exactly where it's at on the island so let me get it more like that. Um, go down one more. Yeah more like that. I want to I want to use this in my brochure. So what I did was um, I don't really <laughs> know that I need that on there. Um, it out so this it okay that's what I want to see on MapQuest now how do I capture that well I typically do a print screen that print screen button is on everybody's keyboard and just hit print screen and then open up your favorite um, image processing program like uh, if you use Photoshop or if you use GIMP or, or a photo editor or paint they all work pretty much work the same way on print screens and then I can just show you how I got it and I went up to um, in any of those programs you can go to edit after you hit print screen and I would just say paste as new image and it remembers what image I did the print screen on it brings it up there it is of the whole screen but it's more than I need so I want to select I just select the part I want um, and position that 
to where I get everything I need, nothing I don't need. Okay, that's good enough. And then I just, in GIMP at least, I go image, crop to selection. Boom, there's my map. And that's what I saved it, gave it a name. I uh, typically save it as a .png image and then used it in the brochure. So it just became an image that I navigated back to and put in the brochure. So let me go back to the brochure. And that's it. Now, uh, typically you'd also put your company logo or name underneath here if you had it already made up. And then I might put a little horizontal rule back in there again. So let me do that. And move that around as needed. Now notice you don't have a vertical rule here yet because you have yet to go into column three. Now the other places your company is located. Hopefully your company has a place on the web. So you have a website, so you know, on the web, you know, put the um, website name. Mine's totally made up, so and I'll center that within the column and then go down and if you have you know other social media locations then you should put those in um, or I can put my made up one there and then uh, if you have a Facebook presence that as well. All right, so I would probably have some extra space down here at the bottom to put another little one of my barefoot graphics there. And it may show up in the other side, but let me just hit square and resize it, make it small so it can go down and be pulled down and fit down here instead. There we go. So that looks that looks pretty good. Now, I can get my cursor, just keep hitting enter to get your cursor to go down the rest of column two. And then as soon as you jump over to column three, there is your panel. So this is the title panel, very important panel. That's the first panel and everybody's going to see when they pick up your brochure. So a couple of tricks you can do on this. And let me see, I'm going to pull that back over. That's not quite as centered as I'd like. And let's see, something about that doesn't quite measure up. Okay, that's better. Now, um, back up here into the last panel, the title panel. This is where you want your logo company name, whatever's being right in here. So this is a trick we're going to do with this one. I am going to insert picture. This one's going to be my snorkeling picture. Let me, sh let me show you something I do with this. So it comes in a big square picture. And I am going to do an effect on this with just using picture styles, real simple. So I'm going to reveal all the potential picture styles available. And there's quite a few round ones and square ones and all kinds. Okay, I'm actually going to use the last one here. It's kind of a portal, like you're looking through a portal into the ocean. So I liked that one. And I thought, well, that, that'll work out. Now I'm going to layer some stuff on top and below it, so or and behind it, I should say. So I'm going to have my barefoot and then adventures down here. So let's do that with some word art. So let's insert some word art. And let's see. I want one with kind of a white interior and a blue out there. I think that'll work. So that's my text box. Well, it pops up over there, but I need it over here. All right, and then I'll just put my actual words in. Of bare, I want barefoot to be on this part. Whoops, let me just take my caps off. And um, you know, no matter if it appears up here or whatever, just drag it down. So this particular exercise, put it here, and get that kind of centered within the portal. And let's see, pretty close. Okay, and then um, I want to go down. And uh, put adventures underneath and kind of have that uh, wrap up underneath there. Let me show you how to do that. That is actually another, um, that's going to be another word art event there. And I can use the same one or a different one. It doesn't really matter. I'm not sure which one I want to use though. 
to lose that one. And pull it down. Now you can control the font and the and the size just by going up to home and saying, okay, I don't need it to be 36. I need uh, maybe not that quite that big. About 28 might be better. Um, do I really want Time of New Roman or something different? I think I want Calibre since it's more of a title. Now, I also want to make it curved. So how do you do that? Well, you have to actually go up to Format to do that and go back to um, Text Effects. And you say, well, wait, you had Text Effects on the Home tab. Why are you going here? Well, I noticed that this one effect, Transform, I really didn't see it in the Home tab. So maybe it's a little different there. But Transform is what I'm looking for. And that's going to let me um, curve. So let me pick um, Curve Down or whatever it said there. Um, and I'm going to um, push it up underneath and just underneath my portal there, kind of take on the wrapping of the portal. And um, that's that part. Now, I'm not done yet. I want to put uh, another little motto down here. Usually you have your company motto or advertising campaign slogan going on down here. And uh, let me put that in. That's again, so just some more word art. Um, there it is. Let me drag it down. And again, I can. I need to say what I'm going to say. Uh, maybe I'll say "Come sail away." Exclamation! And I can choose, you know, different color. I can choose a different font. Um, I think I use something like Franklin Gothic here, just something a little different. Um, Oh, I like Trajan Pro as well. Maybe I'll do that one instead. And get it centered. So you may have to click off of it to see that uh, if it's centered on the panel. And it does look centered. So that fills up the panel from top to bottom pretty nicely. Now the one last thing I'm going to do, if you want to do this, you can add a background color just to this panel. Um, let me just uh, do this. I'm going to insert a shape. And um, the shape is going to be just a rectangle but um, I'm going to draw it to where it takes up the whole spot part of the uh, panel. It can go all the way down to the where the print zone ends. Now it does cover up everything initially. Okay, and then I've just got to go up to um, I can go to wrap text and say um, behind text is probably the easiest way to do that. Now if that's too dark of blue, which I think it looks pretty good, but if I don't want it that dark, you know, I can go back to shape fill. And adjust it. I can make it light blue, uh, something maybe, uh, maybe not quite that light, something in between, something that matches up better. Got lots of colors. You can always go to more fill colors, just whatever you want to do there. Okay, so um, that gives you some design ideas, perhaps, as long as you stay in the printable area and not go too far beyond. Uh, you don't want to go beyond point two on that. All right, and so that's. Uh, an easy way in using Microsoft Word to create a nice brochure. Now, if you want it on regular copy paper, that's fine, but you can also go to your office supply stores and get the more glossy paper, just a small box of that, and uh, put it on glossy paper, run the, put the glossy paper in your printer and before you launch and print this out, and it will look uh, even more professional. So uh, I hope uh, this helps you create some um, really awesome brochures. Good luck with that. Thank you.